The Home Secretary unveiled his five-point plan to slash legal migration yesterday. Speaking in the House of Commons, James cleverly said this. Madam Deputy Speaker, today we have taken decisive action to reduce legal migration with our five-point plan. Enough is enough. OK, so let us just have a look at the details of the plan from Mr. Cleverly. This is all about cutting the numbers coming. But I'm going to put an asterisk here because the crucial word to add is legally. This is not about dealing with the small boats. The small boats, different issue. They will come back to that. So cutting the numbers coming. And there was this massive, what, three quarters of a million in a year that caused a big row. So here's what he is saying he will do. From spring 2024, a skilled worker from overseas will be required to earn 38,700 to qualify for a visa. And that's a big rise from 26,200. Overseas care workers won't be able to bring their family. Then there's this thing called the shortage occupation list. Those are the jobs we really need people in. They're gonna scrap it so you won't be able to pay people 20% below the going rate to fill those jobs. The minimum income required for a migrant seeking to bring a spouse, dependent family members to the UK will be 38,700, up from 18,600. So it'd be harder to bring family. Whole load of student stuff in there as well. And there's been, you know, a, a reaction from the papers where they seem, the tabloids seem excited by this. Access denied, bang, with a big stamp, says the Sun, the Express, and so on. Five point plan to cut migration. It's front page news. But Yasmin, I know you were kind of, you had your head in your hands yesterday a bit, did you? You know, 400 years ago, Shakespeare wrote a speech. I thought you were going to say, I came to this no, country. No, no. 400 years ago, saying, stop shouting about sending the Huguenots back to France. You know, stop this persecution of migrants. Because once you do that, all these people, the, you, you change your society, make it rough, and these people will shark upon you. I've been here 50 years, and I am so tired. I can't tell you how tired I am of every day, every week. Too many migrants, too many migrants, too many migrants. So that's my preamble. Okay. But to but this thing, let me say this. I think the politicians should be honest with the people and say, we're doing this, and that means those of you in care will get far fewer people working in the sector. Those of you needing to use the National Health Service will get far poorer care because people aren't going to come here if they're not allowed well, to bring that, their that families. That is the worry, James, isn't it? That we're going to actually end up, because these are legal migrants we're talking about here, yep. and we're going to end up persuading people who, who do care to go elsewhere. Yes, I, 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 we've got a real problem with care. Uh, we're just not paying our care workers enough. There are plenty of people in the UK who can fill these jobs, but they don't do them for long enough that we have a retention issue and so the workers move on, and then we need to fill the gaps with, with immigrants. I think that it's fantastic the way in which our care system works, and I, and I really appreciate the contribution of the Nigerians and the Zimbabweans and the Indians who are the biggest group who come into that. But we have to be honest with ourselves that we're just not looking after the care workers, giving them a, a, a career prospects, uh, respecting them and training them, and therefore they just leave the jobs, and that's just so, unsustainable. So if to do we it. pay them more, we won't need people from overseas. Ultimately, you're thinking, that's right. but then it's not just the pay; it's the career prospects and and sure. But and you think think about respect. the care from a, a, the point of view of an elderly person watching this, who's trying to fund care at home to avoid going into a home. The 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 cost is just enormous. And for the next five years or ten years, what happens to the people who depend on you know who are in care homes or are about to go into care homes? What happens to the national? But Jasmine, you would I think agree with me that mi paying care work is minimum wage for the kind of work that I they do, do agree with you. the expertise they have, the devotion they have, the commitment. This, these are hard, tough jobs, uh, and often with a huge amount of skill connected with them. How could it be possible that they should be paid minimum wage like this? this the before, only way we can that, do that, a, yeah. okay. it, it is sort of Be abusive we, uh, to the migrants themselves. All right, before we, we take calls, let me just show you this from the Express. This is, gives a summary of what impact they think the measures will have here. So they say that their five-point plan will reduce net migration by 300,000. They've already done some measures on students. The student measures will reduce the number by 140,000. And what we're talking about here, the restriction on care workers who, who won't be allowed to bring family in will then cut the number by 100,000. 
The salary change, 50,000. You put the whole thing together, you've got 300,000 people, and you people know coming what? in. But no, the, the, the Unison uh, General Secretary, Christina McCanny, said, quote, these are cruel plans which spell total disaster for the NHS and social Well, care. let's see what callers think. Tony in Cornwall, is this a disaster or a good move? L listen, it's a disaster. And, and the thing is, he's tweaking with rules that they brought in. I mean, we've been, I'm not, immigration doesn't annoy me in the slightest, you know. Um, it's getting lied to, and we've been getting lied to since Tony Blair in 2004, continually. I mean, why don't politicians just come out and say they want, they want, Mass immigration, it's good for the economy, it's good yeah. to have a pool of work as you can draw. And why aren't they just honest well, about well, wait a it? Minute. When you say it's good for the economy, we've got a million unemployed Brits and a million job vacancies, and for some reason we can't mm. get the Brits to do the jobs. Well, so what, well, why well, is well, that good? Well, there's two things on that. It doesn't take a, a... You don't have to be brainy to know that like three quarters of a million people coming into the country, they've, they're looking for jobs... They've got to buy clothes, food, look for somewhere to live. It, it boosts the economy, short term at least. And the other thing is, when I started work, every, I've worked in construction, and everybody had an apprentice. You'd go on a job and they'd be a plumbing apprentice, a sparky yeah, apprentice, yeah, yeah. a brick. Yeah. And I tell you what, you go on a building site now, and if you find they're like gold dust, you, mm. you, you just never see them at well, all. Yeah, the, the lack of apprenticeship, lack I, of training. I, I, but maybe that's, I, just, I mean, I keep, I hate to say it, but I keep being told by people they take on an apprentice and they only last two days because they started... No, wet, no it, that's totally wrong. That's totally wrong. It? If you give people the chance, young English people or British people, if you give them the chance that as good a workers as anybody I've ever come across... All right, well, can I just Can I just make one more point as quickly, well? Yeah. Is, is morally, is it right to take doctors from India and nurses from... Don't they need them in well, India? And what about nurses from the Philippines? Don't they need medical staff in the Philippines? Well, I just don't whole, think it's morally right to do that. Thank you, Tony. Chris in Manchester, hi. Morning. Uh, where do you start with this one? Uh, Yasmin, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to pick you up on the 400 years ago thing with Shakespeare. I mean, there's there's so many people don't even know who Shakespeare is anymore. So let, let's part <laughs> No, that please one. don't well, tell me that. Well, hang on. She's allowed well, to quote him. Oh, but, That's because people don't quote him enough. Well, well, whatever. But Shakespeare's forgotten. Mo most of our history has been eroded over the last 50 years anyway. But the, the gentleman before about Tony Blair, that's when it started. 1997, not 2004. That for me, it's very simple. It's all about economics. Now, if you want to tax people more, including people like myself, fine, as long as, and this is where I do agree with the previous caller, people, the, the politicians just aren't honest. The money that's been, the, the energy companies, Jeremy, they are getting away with blue murder at the moment. Yeah, but... And, OK, but we're, we're winding, I know you had a lot to say, but we're winding all over the place here. Do you, do you believe the migration plan is too tough, yes or no? No, so, no, no I don't. I think, no. I, think it's, I think it's fine, and I think if you need to generate the extra revenue from um, the coppers that the government take, redistribute it in the right way and pay people proper wages. That's what I think. Thank you, Chris, very much. Too tough is ridiculous. I work in the NHS, and we can't cope with votes people from Asia and India and, and areas like that. So how are we going to cope if they, if they take their family, stop their families from coming over? That's, that's the big change, isn't it, that you won't be able to bring your family now? Yes. And nobody's going to want to come over here. Yeah. Well, that, and, and what will happen, Stephen, then? What, I mean, James was well, saying we're, maybe we're, we'd have to train up some of what you might call our own people. That, that's not going to happen because they don't want to take it now. They've already, two, we've got 250 vacancies in the hospital. Where are we going to get 250 people to come and work in the hospital? But, but you're an example of a, a Brit who's decided to work in healthcare? Yeah. Why, why are, you, but, are you that unusual? Um, I'm not, I'm not unusual, but um, I'm actually... I've been in the healthcare for ten years. Okay, okay. So, do you does it do you do you enjoy it? Can I ask? Uh, a lot of the time, I do enjoy it, but there are occasions when 
you get really depressed and things like that. So yes, it's, you know, it's it's not something that everybody wants to do. Understood, Stephen. Uh, Thank you so much for calling. Have a good day. Thank you. Cheerio, bye. Barry in Leicestershire, hi. Is it too tough, this announcement? Yes, definitely too tough. It was too tough uh, 10 years ago, uh, but it's definitely going to be too tough now. It's, it's, you know what, Barry? It's really, almost everyone said the same thing. Even people, people who would be really alarmed by the small boats and so on, which is disorderly, people are really worried that this is, this is going to mean we don't have as many nurses. No, I can hear it. Um, uh, it's really emphatic, isn't it? The yeah. calls are, are, are very straightforward. On the other hand, uh, three quarters of a million migrants last year is, a, is an enormous number. When you poll people on whether they think that's a good idea, uh, No, but it's it because they're not telling them the whole story. This is where you're getting the story. You're relating it to people's lives and people's needs. You know, if you just talk about us in terms of numbers, mm -hmm. just numbers, not... But also, legal migration is done under an arrangement, isn't it? So yeah, and you can always change years, that. years, this has yeah. been their policy. Yeah. And now they say enough is enough. I mean... But I thought... I thought that and also, you know, remember, India is really putting pressure mm. on our government. If we want these trade deals, they want... Uh, migrants yes, to I mean, be able the, the, to come We've here. had a run rate of 250, 300,000 for quite a long time. It spiked last year at three quarters of a million because of some changes two years ago. And we're reverting back to the old standards. Right. I don't think that is completely unreasonable. I'm hearing a lot of concern about the NHS. That's really of emphatic. Course, and course, people's because... personal experiences, you're right, in people's lives, they're seeing that the NHS is under a huge amount of pressure, care is under, under pressure, people are worried about that. But going back to the old standard is it's not a, a big departure with the past. OK, Jason is in... Thank you, Barry. Sorry, Jason. Jason in Southend, hi. Hello. So, is it too tough? Um... I don't think it goes far enough, to be totally honest with you. Tell us why, because um, you're the first person to say this, so I'm really interested why, why you think <laughs> Well, I just think that there's three reasons, I think, um, that we've been told for, for decades now that we need migration. Um, firstly, is that they say we've got an ageing population, which is true. Um, secondly, they say that the British people are too lazy to do the... Uh, sort of menial jobs that no one wants to do, um, which may be true, but if you perhaps didn't suppress the wages with migration, that wouldn't be an issue in the first place. And then they also tell us that we need migration because we need skilled workers. Well, if that's the case, then why... The problem is that they keep um, importing people from overseas, but it's cheaper to do so than it is to train their own people. Yeah. So you'd think that we would try and invest in our own people and actually stop trying to reduce the cost of wages, um, which is obviously now leading to issues with people not being able to afford to pay for the basic essentials. Wasn't, wasn't Brexit the moment to, to start the process of saying we're going to replace all those European workers with Brits? And here we are seven years on and it just, for whatever reason, it hasn't... Well, yeah, that was, that that was, the, that was the fault, but it hasn't worked like that because right. we've had a Conservative government which hasn't done what it said it was going to do. Well, or maybe people didn't want to be trained to, to, to do caring jobs in this country well, for whatever reason. Yeah, but you're going to have to, eventually, there's going to have to be a situation where we uh, try and rejig the way the, the country works. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, try and make uh, care work more um, socially, <laughs> I don't know. That's, what, that's exactly what we've got, James is saying. We've got this yeah. situation at the moment where, um, you know, everyone's, or the kids are basically pushed to do, oh, go on YouTube or be a pop star or whatever. There needs to be more sort of, I don't know, public engagement with trying to get them enthusiastic about working well, in the you, care, you need care a, work or yeah, NHS. Uh, you need a care version of the X Factor. We've got too many people <laughs> thinking it is. But you're absolutely right. We, we don't glamorise those jobs. That, that should be a glamorous job to be in, being a care worker, James. No, it, uh, sorry, Jeremy, it's never going to be glamorous. But to care is, is the highest form of art. That's true. And I think a lot of... We also have to look at the way in which Britain does employment. I think there is something corrosive about the management style in this country. The NHS, we, Yasmin and I were talking off screen about how racist and hierarchical and misogynistic some of the NHS is. Care also quite abusive sometimes of its own mm. workers. There are improvements within the NHS and care that we need to do so that people don't leave the job so quickly, mm. so that they can re have the flexibility to 
turn it into a proper career for their whole lives and, and, to, and to stick it out for but years. Do you think this thing, Yasmin, the, the, the thing that Jason said, where you know, if you're a young kid, you turn on TV and you're, the whole message of The X Factor is yeah. find your talent and become famous. Yeah, and rich. And, the, and, rich, do, and then you hear people I, I do agree with Jason that we do need to uh, get our population to go into proper jobs and, and to spend money on that. We sh absolutely with mm. you. But what I cannot bear is how government after government, and actually the Labour has been guilty of this, is every time things aren't working, they, they scapegoat migrants, okay? We're not the problem. Okay, Carol in Cheshire, hi. Hi, yes, hi. What, what do you think? Is it too tough, this plan? To be honest with you, um, I... Um, hey, yeah, keep going. Yeah, to be honest with you, um, we have supported um, people coming over to England on a student visa and working 20 hours a week on a student visa and then um, 20 hours a week on a student visa where they can work and, and go to college. Yeah. He then brought his family over and his wife over and then unbeknownst to us, he then got a, another job working 20 hours a week, which he shouldn't have done. And, um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> right, unbeknownst to us, he then got another job, which we did find out about, so then we had to um, sack him. And then, because we had supported him, and he did that without telling anybody, we then had the Home Office knocking on our door because of what he'd done, well, but we actually hadn't done anything wrong. OK. But what? But one thing that does annoy me, everybody seems to focus on immigration and yet I work in a part of a community care company and we don't focus enough on the English people that are doing all this work on minimum wage as well as the immigrants but we can't afford to charge our clients anymore to, to pay any more to the, the staff that we've got I working you. for and the us. The clients are, are going to be tight with their money, of course they are. Thank you Carol very much and thanks for all your calls on this. We'll move on after the break. Was it